Live from Keene, New Hampshire, the most watched TV news show in Keene. The Keene Weekly News with Mark Edgington. Coverage of local and national events starts now. Hello Keene, this is Mark Edgington. You're watching the Keene Weekly News. Today is September the 7th, 2007. Now, I know the title is Keene Weekly News, but some people have not been getting the joke. If it's not a good joke, I'm sorry. But uh, this isn't really a news show. It's me reading the news, and then I comment on what I think about the news. So, if you want to see me comment on the news, feel free to watch. Apparently, they were claiming that the um, main Winchester Marlboro Circle will be open today. I went by at 4.30, not open. Um, I saw, saw, they've, still got, they've still got another few hours to get it open, as though they're going to open it at 5 o'clock on a Friday. It, it could happen, right? Of course, it was supposed to be open originally. Now, remember, we've decided, instead of calling here on the show, instead of calling it the main Marlboro Winchester Circle, because that's just so many syllables and it's so long, that we're just going to call it the expensive circle, because it went from $400,000 to $4.2 million. So that's expensive as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you go there, take a look. You look for $4.2 million. I don't see it. I wonder if it went in somebody's back pocket. I don't have any idea. That's how these little deals work, you know? Graft and corruption. Often somebody knows somebody, and, you know, perhaps a son-in-law gets a little deal. I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's darn expensive. $4.2 million. It's a lot of money on a traffic circle. So, um, supposedly, it, it, it was supposed to be open today. Not. Maybe next week. We'll see how it goes. But it was supposed to be open originally for uh, Keene College's, you know, return. We wanted to have it open so the college students could come back and all that kind of stuff. But there's two rules with uh, government programs. Now, I'm not, I'm not taking a shot at the Keene uh, uh, local government, the city council there. Um, well, maybe a little bit of a shot. But I'm really taking a shot at every local government state government and even the national government when I say two things you can be sure of when it comes to a government program is a it's gonna come in over budget it's gonna cost more than they said it was multiply it times two usually a safe bet so it's gonna be more now I don't think this circle I don't imagine I can't imagine how they're gonna make this circle eight million dollars but it's four point four million dollars now so maybe so you you might decide that it's already coming under budget over budget excuse me and the other thing you can be pretty much guaranteed every single time when it comes to a, a city, state, county, municipal, federal, whatever government program, whether you know when they're trying to build something or do anything, that they're going to be late. They're late, and it costs more than they said it was going to. Every single time. Just figure that's the case. So when you know, some politician is proposing some program, or even a friend or family member or a group activist organization, whomever is proposing some kind of program or legislation, just figure double whatever they say it's going to cost. Actually, when they're that early in the preliminary um, planning stages, quadruple. And figure that it's going to come in late. Likely, when you're talking about any government um, trying to solve some problem, they're not going to solve the problem, and usually they're just going to end up doing the opposite. When it comes to roads, the government does throw enough money at roads that they manage to build them. Now, I, it, it, it's impossible to say that the free market would do a better job building roads than, it, than the government simply because there's so many differences. I mean, obviously, Walmart and Disney World and all those places, they build roads. Um, you know, there's there's roads into their their plazas, and there's you know roads between the parking spaces. So yeah, free enterprise can make roads. The and likely they can do it better, and they can do it cheaper, and they can do it on time. But you know, when you start getting into the area of uh, trying to put a road through the center of town, I don't know how free enterprise would handle all of that. So. It's, is building roads a legitimate uh, form, um, you know, role for the government? I'd say it is. I, you've got to keep an eye on them, and they're going to screw it up every time they do it. Every time you get enough people, not that people in government are bad, it's just when you get enough people together, the dumbness factor kicks in. 
and they can't do anything right. No one takes responsibility, therefore it's nobody's problem. If you were building a, a, a driveway and a long driveway on your own property, you can believe that baby would come in at exactly the price you wanted it to come in and it would get done when you wanted it to get done because you're responsible for it, one person. So anyway, circle, not open. It's late, go figure. Could have told you that in the beginning. <clears throat> Apparently, the circle was also vandalized. It was uh, hit by vandals in the night, exchanging glances. Well, I don't know with whom they were exchanging glances, but apparently they, um, I guess they knocked over a porta potty. Always a fun time knocking over a porta potty. You've got to have a lot of beer in your belly to think that it's a good time knocking over a porta potty. Um, they ripped up some sod uh, that was at the center of the roundabout, and that was worth $750. Damn expensive sod. And uh, $500 worth of traffic contr con control construction signs. Now, I'm not sure that that's vandalism to the circle just because the city got some of their signs kicked over or broken up a little bit. Um, that's not vandalism to the circle. Uh, the city just likes to toss that in. We had some signs and they broke them and stuff. Well, you know, hey, if your circle had been open when it was supposed to, your signs wouldn't have got busted up last night. So... I, I, I don't know what to say. I can't, do I feel bad for the city and their little signs getting busted up? No. Um, it's unfortunate that <clears throat> we're all going to have to pay for this, though. These uh, vandals in the night. These guys, um, you know, they, they're going to cost everybody some money. And, but, you know, that's what, uh, that's what dumb kids that are drinking do. They break crap. You think, how many cops do we have on duty at night? You think they would have caught this stuff, right? I mean, I'm sure that they're out hassling somebody for running a red light at 3 o'clock in the morning. Don't you hate that? When you get to a red light at 3 o'clock in the morning and you've got to, you're just kind of sitting there thinking, well, there's nobody around. I, I feel dumb just sitting here. But you know, you know that if you go through that red light, just as soon as you do, that's when a copper is going to see you. I think, they, I think they sit and wait for that. As though traffic needs directing by these little colored lights at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yep, I've gone through a few and I swear I always get stopped. I haven't gotten a ticket for it. <clears throat> but uh, I have gotten stopped for it. It does help to uh, wear an Oxford and a jacket. and get tickets as often. All right, well, apparently, you know, we uh, voted for that uh, keen, you know, the, t the teachers' uh, union and all that stuff. They wanted some money, and uh, we voted to give them some extra money recently, and apparently the, um, there was a million dollars found by the schools. Uh, keen school district taxes have been uh, playing a long game of limbo this year. How low can they go? A bit lower, according to district business manager John R. Harper. The uh, district recently closed the books on the 2006-2007 school year and ended up with another million dollars in unanticipated revenue. A big gold star for John R. Harper, okay? Um, you will not hear me on here saying congratulations to bureaucrats very often, and <clears throat> likely it wasn't John um, entirely, but all, all of his staff that managed to pull this off. This extra million dollars is great. It's, it comes at the perfect time. It makes people who feel badly about this uh, the, the loss to the uh, teachers' union and the vote here recently. It's going to make them feel a lot better about um, the whole thing. So my question is, um, will we actually get the money back? It says that keen taxpayers could give back $2.4 million. Do you think that we're going to get that in return? Because here in Keene, New Hampshire, in New Hampshire period, if a city or county government doesn't use the money, it then gets returned, refunded to the taxpayer that, you know, that next year. So they get refunds back. If you've been here long enough, you know that it's true. Um, does that mean we get the money back? Because I'll bet we don't. I'll bet that somehow the city government can figure out some way to spend this 2.4 mil. I don't know if they're going to put special planters next to the circle or grade the city water system or what they're going to do, but I'll bet you we don't get back this 2.4 million dollars in some kind of rebate. Just, just a guess. Call me cynical. Most states, I must say New Hampshire is better than most states, most states you once you pay those taxes in, they're never coming back. New Hampshire, they have to give them back if they don't spend them. 
but they're going to spend them. <laughs> Speaking of being involved in your local city government, there's a finance meeting um, at 6.30 tonight at City Hall, um, and it's about uh, Cheshire TV. If you want to support and keep Cheshire TV on the air, you need to uh, head on down to City Hall at 6.30 tonight. And uh, even if you don't support, you really should go and watch your uh, government in action. These people are spending your money while you're sitting at home watching TV or having dinner with your family. They really are. <laughs> like, that's what they're doing. They're in there going, mm -hmm, let's see how much we're going to spend of their money today. And that's what they're doing. Watch out. Here's a good one out of the uh, Keen Sentinel. It says, uh, dating appeal. Men go for looks. Women much more choosy, the study concludes. This is news. So there's GOP, Grand Old Party, in case you've ever wondered what the Republican you know, party stands for. GOP is for Grand Old Party. Debate last night, um, night before last, excuse me, the night before last in uh, Manchester. And uh, the, can uh, the candidates were trying to woo undecided voters nationwide. It was all over. It was a Fox uh, news broadcast. So um, I watched it. Apparently Fred Thompson uh, didn't come to the event, so there were only uh, eight candidates in the race. Uh, Fred Thompson forego, you know, forewent the uh, debate to be on Jay Leno. I kind of understand Jay Leno. People watch that. Um, it's also, it's got to be a tough decision for him because it's, you know, if you're a Republican, it's, it stings a little. It's like, you're like, Fred Thompson wouldn't come to our debate. Hmm. So, uh, I don't know. I watched it, same old stuff from most of the crowd, and then there's Ron Paul talking completely different. I felt like he looked great. He won the, the uh, debate as far as the Fox vote-in text poll. Of course, Sean Hannity would have none of that. Um, he, he's like, whoa, well, it was, it was, they cheated. They, the, those Ron Paul people, they, they voted multiple times, but Fox wouldn't let people vote multiple times. So all you had to do is vote twice and you'd find out very quickly that you've already voted and, and you won't go on. Do you think that the Ron Paul people all have 10 cell phones in their pockets, Sean? Or do you think that the American people are stupid enough to believe you're crap? I, Sean Hannity, man, does he ever carry the bathwater for these Republicans. I am so sick of him. Um, yeah, what is Sean Hannity going to do? Just, this is, this is what if land. Nah, we'll just go play around for a second. What would Sean Hannity do if Ron Paul won the Republican nomination? Would he support Hillary Clinton? Absolutely not. He'd be so stuck. I mean, he's, he's married to this war in Iraq. We're going to kill the Muslims, all of them, hack their heads off. They're evil. Jesus doesn't like Muslims or whatever it is. Kind of lunacy is going on inside his head. Now, obviously, he tempers it a little bit so that uh, people don't actually see what kind of hate-filled bigot he is. But, you know, that's really what he is. Come on. So, um... I don't know what Sean would do if uh, Ron Paul, who voted against the Iraq War and against the Afghanistan War, would do, if Ron Paul won the Republican nomination and then, say, Clinton wins the Democratic nom nomination, which seems like it's pretty much sewn up in the bag for her. If she wins, then she voted for both the Afghanistan conflict and the Iraq conflict. Then you've got a, essentially a pro-war Democrat and an anti-war Republican. What, is sh what would Sean Hannity do with that situation? He'd be so confused. Because he's a pro-war Republican and hates Democrats. As a matter of fact, I saw Sean speak. Um, it's been about a year now. And the first thing he said, it was, it was a radio convention. He was supposed to be talking about radio stuff. First thing he said, Hillary, you will not win in 08, as though this is the only thing in his mind. It's a radio convention. Sean Hannity's there to talk about radio. What's he talking about? Hillary frickin' Clinton. I, out of his mind. I met uh, Fred Thompson, too. He stepped on my shoe. Um, he was very nice, though. His hands were this big, giant. He put them on my shoulder, you know, to kind of support me or catch me because he stepped on my shoe. And they were, they were big, big, big hands. He was very nice, though. Uh, pleasant man. That mole is real. You know, he's not trying to fool you or anything. Way up here on his head. Um, 
met Joe Biden or you know saw Joe Biden speak too. So I've I've I've, I've watched a few of these candidates, and I I got to tell you, mm, um, Ron Paul, I met him too. He's the only one worth voting for. Keep an eye on him, folks. Um, this is national. Apparently, the Air Force pilots uh, unknowingly fly with nuclear warheads. Nuclear. That's for George. Nuclear, George. Nuclear. Okay. Apparently, they, they took off, didn't know that they, they were in the air several hours, didn't realize that they had six, six nuclear Tomahawk missiles. Man, what else, what other kind of big nuclear mistakes are they making there that they don't tell us about? This is the first one I've heard about in quite some time. You wonder how many of them don't, don't you hear about? Scary. I know that the federal government's the only one that can be trusted with these nuclear weapons. I understand that they're the only ones competent enough to be trusted with nuclear weapons. But they're screwing up all the time. <laughs> Doesn't make me feel good. Doesn't make me feel good at all. <clears throat> Apparently the, um, the state is looking to preserve the history of uh, 92 Water Street. <clears throat> it was at one point a shoe store stuff. I wonder how much this is going to cost us. I mean, it was really just an abandoned building. Well, it is just an abandoned building now. And Nothing impressive about it at all, but the state says that we've got to preserve the history of the shoe factory. If somebody wants to preserve the history of the shoe factory, let them go buy the shoe factory. They can turn it into a museum for shoes. People can go and see old shoes and stuff. People do go to museums, I swear to God. They make money. There are many, many private museums in the United States. We do not need the state getting involved. <clears throat> Not even a little bit. Yesterday, city council meeting, they uh, did a um, city emergency services. They were conducting a, sort of a, a study as to whether or not they should switch the ambulance services over from uh, public, which is what they currently are, public, meaning you've got to pay for them whether you use them or not, to private, meaning you wouldn't have to pay for anything you didn't use, and the people who did use would have to pay. Essentially, it's a taxi service with flashing red lights. Currently, if you want to go to the hospital, you call and say, I need an ambulance. And if you can't afford that ambulance, well, you don't have to pay because it's the city. What are you going to do? We've got to keep it here for the poor people. and We don't want people that don't have enough money not calling an ambulance and then dying and stuff. But are you... I mean, is all you have to do is talk to a few ambulance drivers and you will realize very quickly that there are a lot of people that essentially use it as a taxi. You know, they got a hangnail, um, they want to get down to the hospital, get some free meds or whatever the hell it is that they're doing. They can just call an ambulance. Now, those of us in the middle class, I had to go to the hospital. It's probably been about three months um, ago, but I had to go to the hospital. My wife got up and she drove me in the car. Why? Because I didn't think that it was an emergency to the point where I would call an ambulance. <clears throat> but when you think about one of these uh, poor wel welfare recipient kind of people, what are they going to do? They're going to call an ambulance. Bam! Right away. And you're going to pay for it. And that's really one of the problems here. Now, there's a, a committee studying whether Keene should switch to its ambulance services exclusively to private ambulance companies was found. The city's current arrangement is the best option for saving lives. So public is better for saving lives and saving money. Letting the government run something is better for saving money. Doesn't that sound like a lie? Well, I had, I had a reporter on the ground. I have uh, an inside scoop. Somebody was there. Essentially what you had is, um, you know, the fire chief saying, no, it's bad to take away the ambulance service because he's in charge of that crap. I mean, what do you think a manager is going to say when we want to take away 50% of the people that you manage? No, because that's likely to mean a pay cut. It's likely to mean, it's certainly going to mean budget cuts. It means he's less important in the grand scheme of things. What do you think it's better for a bureaucrat's, res bureaucrat's resume? Being, having 100 people under him or having 50 people under him? 
And then there was an expert that was brought in and, you know, what did the expert say? Well, I've done some research. Didn't give any of the research. Just said, I've done some research and I've decided it's better. These are just big government bureaucrat type people that want to spend your money. They don't care. And so now the Keene City Council has done its due diligence. Well, we've got an expert and we're looking into it. Is anybody fooled by this crap? Anybody who's paying attention? Most of us aren't. Most of us want to go home, eat dinner, sit around with our family, talk, enjoy our lives. But these people are out spending your money while you're doing it. <clears throat> Nearly 60% of Keene High School students surveyed last year said that they'd been bullied or harassed at least once or twice during the school year. And a third said that they saw students bullied at least three times a day in school. Counselors and administrators say that bullying can be an under-the-radar issue that isn't necessarily widespread, but a new anti-bullying program that's coming to school this year is aimed at preventing bullying before it starts. Bullying. Ask anybody, anyone, whether they ever dealt with bullying in school, and I suspect the answer is going to be, yes, I was bullied in school. Bullies are bad. Now, I'm not saying bullies are good. I am saying that everyone's dealt with it. Now, I'm, I don't know anything about this program that they're proposing, except that it's going to have unintended consequences. Now, we've got a zero tolerance. Uh, I've got a story right here that, we, that I may very well get to. As a matter of fact, I'll get to it right now. Police responded to Keene High School Wednesday for a report that an 18-year-old student had brought a dagger to school. Listen to this. That dagger is that key word. Hold on. Um, the student from Marlowe's carrying pocket knife, pants. Um, the knife was in his pants. No one had been, it's a misdemeanor charge, no one had been threatened with the knife. It's not like he was bandy, you know, brandishing it or anything like that. And he, apparently he claimed he uses it for fishing. Now is it a dagger? or a fishing knife. What qualifies as a dagger? Can you call a fishing knife a dagger? I suppose you, I suppose you could. It's certainly more fun when you're writing in the newspaper. Um, it certainly makes a lot more sense when you're giving a kid a misdemeanor for bringing a knife to school. Now, it, it wasn't so long ago I was in high school and kids would have shotguns in the um, gun racks of their car. Nobody died. Nobody was endangered. There were, nobody felt endangered. And that's what endangered means. It means how you feel. And I suspect this safeguard bullying program thing is going to have a lot to do with how people feel. People learn things from bullying. I learned how to carry myself like a man from bullying. If I didn't get that kind of treatment, I don't know how my life would be. But I like the way my life is now. I'd like to come out here on television and I'd like to thank each and every one of the bullies that bullied me, bullied me while I was in school. It's part of who I am today. What's wrong with bullying? I mean, I don't endorse bullying. Certainly it's bad, but is it terrible? Do you really want to insulate our kids from every little thing that could go wrong? Do we want to, do we want to smooth out every corner in the world? Do we want to lock up all the dangerous stuff so nobody can get to them? Well, these kids are going to be adults one day. And then who's going to protect them? We're going to have to protect everybody from cradle to grave. Except in, if they're fighting wars for our government, at which point we have to throw them in front of bullets. People are crazy. Nuts. wonder how much that program is going to cost us all. <clears throat> Uh, elections take more than just candidates. Poll workers have a variety of duties. If we want this government to work, we all have to pitch in to some extent. At this point, the uh, opportunity to be a candidate for local government is over. But you can still get a hold of the, uh, the uh, people in charge of voting there and, and volunteer to be a poll worker. So I think that it's a good idea for everybody to uh, give a little. Volunteer time, and there's a way for you to do it. Get a uh, hold of the director of elections or whomever handles that stuff. All right.
I'm going to take a side on a local issue here. Somebody's not going to like me by the time I'm done with this. It's nothing personal, whoever you are out there. Blastos endorses Pregent for the job. Um, Mayor Blastos has endorsed City Councilor Dale Pregent to succeed him in the office. No, Dale Pregent voted for this uh, expensive circle on Marlboro, Winchester, Maine, and anybody who would be so cavalier with taking someone's property, I understand, eminent domain, it's a constitutional right, I got it. But I would say that our Constitution does codify the stealing by city, state, local, municipal governments from individuals for the purpose of building roads and those kind of things. It was a legitimate stealing, but it's still stealing. So Dale Pregent voted for that. Nobody who voted for that to take a circle that cost $400,000 and turn it into a $4.2 million, or, you know, a redo of the inner cost $400,000 to turn it into a $4.2 million operation. No, can't have my vote, sorry. Um, Filio's also running. He's a nice guy. He does a show here after me, and um, I've enjoyed talking to him. He was against this circle from the very beginning, and um, I like him. I think I'm going to, I know I'm going to endorse Joe Benzensky. He's the owner of uh, Romy's Market on Marlboro Street. He's my kind of guy. He votes no against everything. The reason he got on the city council, he's currently a city council member, the reason he got on the city council was to tell them no. And I'm endorsing Joe Benzinski. I hope to have him interview him here on uh, Cheshire TV in the relatively near future. You guys can learn about him. He's a real man of the people. So there you go. I told you somebody wasn't going to like me by the time I'm done. That's what an endorsement is. You got to go out on a limb. You got to take a you got to take a stand and that's what I've done. My name is Mark Edgington. This is the Keen Weekly News. Not really. It's just my opinion. And uh, today is September the 7th, 2007. Thanks for watching. If you've got anything that you want to share with me, it's mark at freekeen.com. That's M-A-R-K at freekeen.com. Get down there to the uh, 6.30 uh, meeting for Cheshire TV and have a good weekend.